Boy Run, I'm back with another video. This is Trigger Reactions, and this is Joe Rogan with Jordan B. Peterson. Let's get into it. Freud was no dummy when he pointed to the fact that the devouring mother was one of the major impediments to proper human development. He knew that, mm. looking deep into the darkest families and seeing this proclivity of the overprotective mother to destroy the developing integrity of the child, to keep the child infantile, to cling to that relationship instead of developing life for herself and letting the child go flourish. That's Hansel and Gretel, right? Mm. You're lost in the woods. Why? Well, your family's broken up. You have an evil stepmother, so now you're lost in the woods. What's your abuse rate if you have a step-parent? 100 times normal. So you're lost in the woods. Well, what happens? Well, you come across a gingerbread house. Well, that's pretty damn convenient. You need a house. It's a little, it's more than you could even hope for. It's not just a house. It's a house made out of candy. Well, what's inside a house made out of candy? A witch who wants to fatten you up and eat you. And that's the devouring mother, you know, and that's an old fairy tale. <sighs> So basically, what Mr. Peterson is talking about is, you know, if you go watch the full interview, uh, before this, they were just talking about how toxic masculinity, right, is always talked about. But when are we mature enough to speak about the toxic femininity, which he is saying is overprotective, overbearing mothers who coddle their children? especially young boys who are overprotective and that's just one form of it he's going to speak a little bit later too in this video about some other toxic femininity that no one speaks about it's not even brought up let's get into it no kidding yeah, and so, you know, we could we could dwell on that for a minute, too. One of the things we won't honestly discuss in our society, one of many, is the fundamental nature of female political psychopathology. You know, and there's male political psychopathology, obviously. That's what the feminists complain about all the time when they talk about the oppressive patriarchy, you know, toxic masculinity. There's no shortage of toxic masculinity. So is there any toxic femininity? Well, not if... The feminine is just the, you know, oppressed virgin goddess whose nature. But how about we don't live in that fantasy world? No. And we know, yeah, there's female political pathology. The tendency to infantilize everyone. And the tendency to assume that everyone who doesn't go along with the infantilization is properly characterized as a predator. Hmm. And so, you know, you wonder why are the universities turning into extended daycares? Well, a lot of the, a lot of the reason for that is that women who don't have anything better to do are turning the university students into the infants they never had. Ooh. He says something there. <laughs> and we all know nothing's worse than a 40, 45-year-old woman with no kids, nothing else better to do. But... <laughs> <laughs> but want to control things because she's bitter. Mm. And who are some of these people running a lot of these uh, organizations that hate men? Hmm? Who? It's not too many women who, with husbands and children and love in her life. It's not too many of those women spewing hate towards men and vice versa too we could say that as well a lot of men who are married in relationships that are healthy with the women they love not bashing women either but the point of this video is to speak about we speak about the men and what toxic masculinity that they have what we have. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. Jesus. I don't know when we'll be able to be mature enough to have that conversation. Mm, you know, never. 20 years from now. What is a path to bring this back 
to some sort of uh, rational, logical way of discussing okay. these problems. So I, I tweeted out, I don't know if you saw this, that I was going to make an announcement on your show today. And so I, I set up an international consortium based in London. I can't tell you all the details yet, but we're, we're, we're trying to put together something like an alternative vision of the future, say an alternative to that kind of apocalyptic narrative that's being put forward, at least implicitly by organizations like the WEF, you know, and that's the virginal planet, rapacious tyrant, you know, all devouring consumer religion. And it's more like something like, well, we want to ask people six key questions. Okay, so how do we get energy and resources at the lowest possible cost as rapidly as possible to the largest number of people around the world? Mm. That's one question. And so there's a presumption in the question, and here's one of the presumptions. You don't get to save the planet by making energy prices so expensive that no one poor can afford them. That's off the table. So if you want to develop alternative energy sources, no problem. You know, because, hey, man, the more energy sources we have, the better. But you don't get to impose your utopian vision in the service of your narcissism on the poor. We're going to try to make the poor rich. We're going to try to alleviate absolute poverty. Pro-human view on environmental stewardship front. That I like this. I like this. I like where it's going. Uh, that's a great announcement. Um, I didn't know the video was going to go into this, but I like it. I like it. Let's keep listening. Sounds like a... Sounds like Mr. Peterson has something up his sleeve that he's working on that could help benefit humanity. It's always a good thing. Let's keep watching. Next question. What are the major problems that are confronting us? How do we take a sophisticated, multidimensional view of that? How do we prioritize our attempts to establish our states and our international relationships properly so that we prioritize human well-being, you know, in harmony with nature to the degree that's possible, but human-focused and not predicated on the idea that there are too many goddamn mouths on the planet to feed and that you're evil if you just think about having children. So then on the governance front, this is where it gets kind of more left-wing, I would say, is none of the people involved... In I noticed something. I like his two-faced uh, blazer. It definitely gives vibes of two-faced off of uh, Batman. <laughs> it does. <laughs> he had that in the cartoon or the earlier uh, one, the earlier uh, Batman comics. But uh, I like it. But no, so far he's basically putting together something that basically is pro-human. It encourages um, giving birth and having children being fruitful and multiplying. It encourages renewable energy sources that's affordable for everyone. It encourages getting rid of poverty. Mr. Peterson, I definitely want to hear more about this. I definitely want to hear more about this. Uh, hmm. Intriguing. Let's keep listening, guys. I'm liking this. Consortium so far, very thrilled with global corporate fascist government media and uh, and co and uh, corporation collusion. You know, mm -hmm. and we're seeing this at the high end. It's like a Tower of Babel. Is that the the powerful players in the world are increasingly collaborating to impose a top down vision of the future on everyone. And that's a future that's predicated on a zero growth model. And the idea that, well, we need five planets really to support everyone at the current standard of living that obtains in the West. So the best pathway forward is to deny loans by the World Bank to developing countries so they can't develop, you know, energy sources, which all that'll mean is they're going to burn wood and coal, obviously. So, so that's the third question is, you know, how do we arrange systems of governance to stop the march of something like pathological gigantism. This is why I like people like Russell Brand and also you to some degree politically, you know, because you guys are very, what would you say, sensitive to the danger of that kind of corrupt collusion, that regulatory capture that occurs when corporate entities and media entities and governmental entities are all in bed together. Like the That's a horrible thing, and we're watching that happen. We're watching it happen. 
when corporate, government, and media are in bed together. They can create confusion, propaganda, make up any stories, control the masses through manipulation. I like Mr. Peterson. I like where you're going, sir. Uh, but if you really like this video, guys, please hit that thumbs up button down below, man. Comment down below. Let's dialogue. This is this is a good one here. It started out one way, and then it started going somewhere else. Uh, I definitely love where it went, and I'm curious to see what Mr. Peterson's uh, next actions or plan of action is to create this, to make this actually happen. Can he? Hey, he definitely going to need the support of us and people, not just in his country, here in the West, you know, so I love this interview. Uh, definitely go watch it. I'll leave the link down below. And thanks for watching this channel, guys. Uh, this was a different one. I like this one. I like, I, mean, I like all the videos I react to, obviously. That's why I react to them. But I, I, this is a question I want to ask you guys. And please comment down below. Do... How do you feel about, like, basically what he just said? Like, really, what are your thoughts? Do you believe it's possible? Um, how do you feel about government, media, and big corporations being in bed together and what that does to a society? Leave your ideas down below, guys. I love you guys. Thanks for watching the, the video. See you in the next video. It's your boy Ron. This is Trigger Reactions. Peace.